Hello, welcome back everybody. Now uh, we will start with the experiment using Wireshark. So this experiment is about uh, capturing and analyzing TCP IP packets. So now we'll, what we will do is we will capture the packets as we had done in the previous uh, video uh, and then start analyzing uh, the packet, especially the TCP and IP. So uh, getting into the TCP IP protocols uh, suite. So just having a quick look, we have the uh, IP protocol sitting in the network layer and then we have the uh, TCP protocol sitting in the transport layer. And then from the application layer, uh, we know that uh, HTTP protocol uses uh, TCP uh, to fulfill its uh, uh, data requirements. Likewise, uh, FTP also uses uh, uh, TCP uh, to get the data transfer uh, with the TCP server. So to generate uh, uh, TCP and IP packets, what we'll do is uh, we will use uh, HTTP, that is we'll use a browser and then uh, type a URL over there. So that will generate HTTP tra traffic, which will in turn generate TCP and IP. So likewise, we will also uh, repeat the same process with FTP, FTP client and that also will use TCP and further it will generate IP traffic. And then just looking at the uh, data encapsulation, here is what uh, uh, the packet will look at the link layer and we know Ethernet basically captures uh, the packets from the link layer that is Ethernet or the uh, Wi-Fi uh, in this case. So this will be the frame that or this will be the ma main components of the frame that will be captured by the Wireshark. And uh, of course, it will have uh, a part of data which is coming right from the top layer. That is, in our case, it could be HTTP or uh, FTP. And then as it goes down, so we'll have data, then we'll have its uh, uh, the header corresponding to HTTP or the FTP. Then further, we'll have the TCP header, followed by that we'll have IP header, and then the uh, the the Ethernet or the uh, basically the link layer header. So in this experiment, we'll be focusing on uh, the contents of this TCP header and the contents of this IP header. So we'll be looking at the format, uh, the fields inside this. What will be the size of those fields? And we'll just pick up one particular packet and look at the contents of the uh, the headers also. Moving ahead. So right now, we are now focusing on IPv4, uh, the packet format. So this is what uh, is given by the uh, the protocol standards. You can see that, uh, uh, so you, you, th this is basically, these uh, fields are basically what we will find uh, here in the TCP header. So this is what is zoomed in and if we zoom in, uh, this is how it will look. So basically it is 32 bits long each row and the next 32 bits for uh, convenience sake it has been organized as second row over here and likewise third row, fourth row and so on. So this is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row and you can observe this is uh, optional now and followed by that you can see that we have uh, data here. So looking at this, in fact each row here is 32 bits which is nothing but uh, uh, 4 bytes. So they are totally uh, 5 uh, rows or organized as 5 rows. So which will mean it is basically 4 bytes. The length of the header at the minimum is 4 bytes into 5 which is 20 bytes. So IP at the minimum has 20 bytes. And further uh, it also says, the, for example, the first 32 bits, it's kind of partition in the middle. You can see that 16 bits is uh, to this side. That is the datagram length occupies 16 bits. The field datagram, datagram length occupies 16 bytes. And the remaining 16 uh, bits is again split into uh, multiple areas. So basically 4 for the version, 4 for the header length and the remaining 8 is for the type of service. So likewise, the second row also you can see, uh, we have a field, 16-bit field, 
then uh, out of the 16 bits we have 13 bits for the fragment offset so which will mean we'll be left with the flags will be left with 3 bits so similarly you can see uh, basically 8 bits 8 bits and then 16 bits then these are the important fields in uh, uh, the IP uh, header so basically 32 bits uh, source IP address and another 32 bits for the destination IP address and then op optional fields in case they are required and then the data now let's uh, look at a uh, Wireshark packet TC let's first generate the packets in Wireshark and then uh, let's fill up this table so this table basically you can see that all those fields that we saw from the format header format are listed here so version number header length so basically let's look at a packet now and uh, from that let's observe what is the length it the version is occupying and then what is the content of that uh, version field let's note them down over here so let's minimize this and then we have uh, the wire shark in the background so let's pull it up and then let's uh, start it and as of now we are interested in uh, I mean we want to generate TCP and IP so basically we'll be using HTTP browser so let's keep the filter for HTTP and then let's pull the browser out browser is there okay let's generate the uh, let's access this website yeah well it is in cache so let's refresh it now every i'm doing a force refresh so we can see lots of packets have come in the background so let's get back to the browser let's minimize this browser and let's get back to wireshark so first thing is we'll let's stop this and then let's pick up any packet for example let's pick up this packet and then when we pick up or let's say first let's pick up an initial packet let's go here yeah um, let's pick up this packet so this is uh, you can see that uh, this packet basically from my machine dot 9 is my machine and it is going to dot 245 which is the web server so now we can see from the headers you can see that basically uh, it has http header in it it has tcp header in it ip header and subsequently we have ethernet header so we are interested in let's start with ip because we saw ip let's expand this and then uh, let's make sure that we are also seeing the packet that we have selected yeah that's the packet that we had selected or oh, yeah we'll select this packet this is the packet we want to look into <coughs> and then uh, let's look at the contents of this yeah when we click the IP header when you highlight it now you can see in the pane 3 uh, the blue area highlighted area uh, it's basically you can see a part of uh, the first row that is uh, uh, basically two bytes from the first row then 16 bytes from the second row that is totally 18 bits and finally from the third row we have another two bytes so you can see that 20 bytes have been highlighted which is indicate which is as per our understanding that ip at the minimum should have 20 bytes uh, header then let's uh, start noting down these values let's uh, bring this to the front and then let's see the version so now we can see the version here so version field uh, we can see that uh, yeah when we click the version it is saying that uh, from the third pen you can see that it is picking up the value from the uh, basically the byte which has hexadecimal 4 5 in it and then it is also further saying that out of that byte it is using only the first four bits and the remaining four bits are not used or rather the next four bits is being used by the header length so let's note down these values into the table that we have so let's bring the table to the front yeah so basically we have the version num version which occupies which uses four bits and it has a value of uh, a 0100 basically binary in it which is equivalent to four decimal so one of the we should it's okay if we note down just one of them 
Likewise, header length, if you see, we have seen that that also is occupying four bits, and the content of the header length is in binary format. It is one zero one, which is uh, five basically in decimal. Uh, what it indicates is that it has uh, header length is of five rows. When you say it says uh, five, it, it is indicating that it five rows, which is equivalent to each row is basically four. Uh, bytes so 5 into 4 is 20 bytes it is saying that the header is 20 bytes in length then after that we have the uh, different uh, shell services which is nothing but uh, the types of service uh, and then if we observe this it is highlighting one byte over there so basically it is saying that it is using 8 bits and then the content of it, like we can see it is hexadecimal zero zero and then after that we have the total length you can see from the third pane that it is highlighting that it is using 16 bits and the content of it is zero three three f and this is hexadecimal if you want to note it down in decimal uh, decimal also it is fine decimal it, it is showing the second pane that it is 831 then let's get into identification uh, 16 bit identifier in fact it is 16 bit and then we can see the contents of it is 0x e 848 then uh, the flag so we got to be a little bit careful here flag it's saying that it is uh, from the third pen we can see that it is taking values from that one byte of 40 but when we expand it then we get the details here that the flags are using only just the first three bits so flags are basically three bits and the value of the flags are 0, 1, 0 and these are binary so it is base 2. Then the offset, uh, if you observe the offset, offset is again highlighting the same uh, byte uh, in the third pane, 4, 0 and additionally it is highlighting 0, 0. So which means uh, uh, out of those, uh, out of those uh, 16 bits, uh, 3 bits are gone for flags, so it is left with 13 bits. And in this 13 bits, if you observe the value inside the 13 bits is 0. 0 basically, yeah, we can say they are all zeros actually, uh, we can say 0, 0. So basically 13 zeros, base 2. And then followed by that time to leave, you see, it is 8 bits. And the value of it is uh, 55 in decimal. Then after that we have the protocol. We can see that uh, protocol is using 8 bits. Oh, sorry. Your protocol is using 8 bits. And uh, the value of the protocol is 6 decimal. Which indicates that it is... TCP and then after that we have uh, checksum checksum is 8 bits sorry 16 bits checksum is occupying 16 bits and the value inside that is uh, 0x3588 and then uh, yeah these are the important fields you can see source address uh, from the third pen, you can see it is occupying uh, 4 bytes, which is nothing but 32 bits. And the value inside that, it is CA41. Instead of that, we will note down the uh, dotted decimal notation, which is basically 202.65.141.245 then uh, the destination address is again uh, you can see that it has highlighted uh, the 32 bits there and the value of it is 192 168.10.9 and then we don't have any optional fields and followed by that we have data and in this case we can see that the immediately tcp header is following so which means it is carrying tcp data 
and from the length uh, we can calculate uh, in fact one way to calculate is uh, basically the data for ip starts from here so when you see it is starting from uh, basically the second row in the third pane if you see uh, leaving the first uh, two bytes leaving the first two bytes that's from uh, that's where basically the data is starting from this it goes on till the end so one way to calculate it is uh, basically count the number of uh, rows here each row is 16 bits so one way is to calculate that another way is to basically uh, get it from the field length over here so data length is uh, 831 bytes so this is how this is how uh, yeah 831 bytes and this is how uh, we have looked at the ip packet the same thing now uh, we can do for the tcp packet also tcp packet also like you can see from the uh, format the header as per the protocol tcp packet format it has one row two three four five and this is optional so that means this also at the minimum has uh, you know, four bytes in each row into five so this also at the minimum has 20 bytes header and then followed by that we have data so we have a table for this also so let's highlight the uh, let's highlight the tcp header so this is the tcp header the same exercise you can do here also uh, if you see the source port now so yeah in fact if we click the header we can see in the third pane that it has totally highlighted uh, uh, 20 bytes over there it has highlighted 20 bytes so tcp header it is as per our understanding then if we click on the source port you can see source port is taking uh, 16 bits and it has a value of 80 so it is taking 16 bits and it has a value of 80 decimal which is nothing but generally 80 is reserved for uh, HTTP so indicating that the HTTP server is sending to the destination port which is again 16 bits in in our case it is 16 bits in our case and uh, the port number is in our laptop the port number 54,299 is being used so generally in the order of uh, uh, port numbers below 1000 are reserved for standard protocols and above that are uh, whichever is free is used for the applications after that we have uh, these are just placeholders and then we have the tcp segment length yeah a sequence uh, we have the sequence number sequence number you can see that it is taking 32 bits and uh, if we note down the hexadecimal value it is 0x386f69f4 and then again looking at the this is decimal value this is uh, then we have the acknowledgement number and again acknowledge number if you see the next 32 bits are the acknowledgement number <coughs> and the value of the acknowledgement number is 712708d3 then uh, this is in decimals and then if you see the immediate uh, next 50 uh, hexadecimal 50 is being used for header length and you can see that it is saying only it is using only the four bits and the value of it is 0101 base 2 which is basically saying that phi into four bytes is equal to 20 bytes it is saying that the header of the tcp is 20 bytes followed by that we have flags flags you can see that they are using the 50 and 18 so if i click on the flag it is using 50 and, 50 and 80 that is in 50 uh, it is using 4 bits 
and then 8 bits from the remaining so which is basically 12 bits are for flags and in, you can see the values for them are basically yeah you can either say 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 or it is basically 0 x 0 1 8 base uh, yeah we said x right so it will be 16 and then followed by that followed by that we have uh, window window is again receive window is again 16 bits and the value in the receive window is uh, either hexadecimal 36 or we can note it down as 54 to the base 10 and then these are just some additional information then this is checksum you can see checksum is using 16 bits 16 bits and the value it has is 39 f2 followed by that this is again some information uh, this is yeah urgent pointer data pointer and we can see it is using 16 bits and the value inside that is 0 followed by that uh, this is again just information information and then we have the TCP payload you can see the TCP payload the remaining stuff is TCP payload which is nothing but we know it is carrying HTTP data so it is carrying HTTP data and the length of it that he has specified 791 bytes of course there are no optional fields in it yeah this is how the TCP in fact if we observe the values that we have noted here uh, the lengths of the field they are all they all tally with the format basically what TCP packet uh, specifies or TCP protocol specifies so in fact uh, uh, this same experiment uh, we had generated this with uh, we had generated the TCP and IP using HTTP now let's uh, uh, do it with uh, generate the TCP IP with uh, FTP so let's clear this off let's keep the the filter as FTP FTP yeah there are no packets we have started it off then let's uh, open a command from terminal and then let's type uh, ftp www.mgit.ac.in hit enter and you can see in the background we are getting some data in fact it is asking for password but we don't have a valid account with it i'm just typing some random things here random password obviously you can't log in but that's not our intention so uh, basically our intention is that okay login has failed our intention is that it has generated some FTP packets so let's go back and uh, look at uh, the Wireshark uh, the main difference that we will see here is that uh, let's pick up for example this packet so the main difference we will see is in the, uh, the TCP now so previously if you observe the destination port was uh, the traffic was generated to uh, in case of HTTP it was generated to port number 80 whereas in case of FTP it has been generated to port number 21 so port number 21 is the standard port where generally the FTP servers listen to otherwise all the other uh, you can see that now uh, the header from the application layer is of type FTP then we have tcp in fact all the fields remain the same that we have seen for uh, the http case uh, of course the values change but the length of the fields will remain same one of the notable change is like we said uh, the port number 21 and likewise the fields of ip also remain the same uh, like we had seen previously the lengths of the field also remains the same of course the values will change the values will now corresponding to the correspond to the new uh, packet that we are observing okay coming back uh, to the presentation so let me 
maximize this. So we have filled up, uh, we have looked at the IP and TCP packets. We looked at the IP packet. This is the details that we noted down and it will match with the, uh, the IP packet format that is specified in standards. Likewise, uh, uh, we, have not, we have looked at the theoretical uh, structure given by TCP protocol in the standards and uh, the values that we have noted down also match with the uh, theory. Uh, summarizing, what we did was we generated the TCP IP network traffic uh, using both HTTP and FTP. We captured the network packets in Wireshark and then we had set appropriate filters uh, to filter out the packets and see what we are interested in. And then we analyze the contents of both TCP and IP headers. And ob our observations match uh, what is specified in the standards. Okay, we'll stop here. Thank you. And see you in the next uh, video.